Stop Vintage Bunny Crochet. Today I have for us to do this really cute fall cocoon cardigan. Just like what was in the slide in the beginning and in the thumbnail. So it's really hard to get it into the camera because it's really big. But I'm going to kind of show here the stitch that you'll be using. It's a really pretty stitch. It's called a lemon peel stitch. It's super easy to do and I think it came out really super nice. So let's drop the camera down and I'll talk about the hook size you'll need and the yarn and everything that you need to make this really pretty cardigan. So the yarn I used to make the fall cocoon cardigan is Red Heart Colorscape yarn. This is 100% acrylic yarn. It is a medium four yarn. The color I use is called Munich. This, these balls come in a 3.5 ounce, 100 grams, um, 187 yards. You will need about eight balls to do this cardigan. So we're talking about 1500 yards that you will need to make the cardigan. I do have two sizes. I have misses and plus. I would still, to be on the safe side, get yourself eight balls of this yarn. I literally had just a smidgen of yarn left. And I did the miss size, and excuse me, the plus size. And that's all the yarn I had left. So if you are a little bit looser crocheter, you might want to make, you're going to definitely want to have that, that eighth ball. Even if you do the miss size, you might want to have that eighth ball just to be certain that you don't run out of yarn. Now with that being said, you want to know the hook size. I used a K hook, 6.5 millimeter hook, and you're going to need a yarn needle with a large enough eye on it because this is a little bit thicker yarn than the average uh, medium four. A pair of scissors. It's always good to have some stitch markers on hand. So you'll want to have some of those. So once you have all your supplies, let's get started. To start the fall cardigan, we're going to start with a chain of 110 for the miss size. For the plus size, you're going to start with a chain of 116. Starting second chain from hook, the loop on your hook does not count as a stitch. So go one, two, we're going to work a half double crochet. So work one half double crochet into each stitch all the way down the chain. I'll meet back up with you when we get to the end of the chain. I'm at the end of row one. If you are working the miss size, you will have 109 half double crochet. If you are working the plus size, you will have 115. To start row two, chain one, turn the work. In the First, very first stitch, we're going to put a single crochet. The next stitch, a double crochet. Next stitch, single crochet. Next stitch, double crochet. Next stitch, single crochet. Next stitch, double crochet. Next single, then double. And that's all you're going to do all the way across 
this row is single crochet and double crochet. I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row two. Our last stitch is a single crochet. That will work out to be a single crochet for both sizes. You should have 109 stitches for the misses and 115 stitches for the plus size. To start row three, we're going to chain up three, one, two, and three, and that will count as our first stitch. So that counts as a double crochet. Turn the work, and then we're going to start our next stitch as a single crochet. Then a double crochet, and a single crochet double crochet, single crochet, double crochet, and single crochet. Basically what you're doing is whatever that next stitch is you're going to be putting the opposite in there. So this next stitch is a single crochet so we're going to put a double crochet into it. Then the next stitch is a double, we're going to put a single into it. Then a double. And a single. Double crochet in the next stitch. Single crochet in the next. And we're going to repeat that all the way across until we get to the end of the row. I'm at the end of row three. Our last stitch is a double crochet. Our stitch count is the same. We have 100, 109 stitches for the miss size, 115 stitches for the plus size. Row 3 started with a chain 3 and ended with a double crochet. We'll do one more round with you and then we will be on your own. We're going to start round uh, row four with a chain one. This is going to be a repeat of row two. Turn the work. Our first stitch is a single crochet. Next stitch is a double crochet. Single crochet. Double crochet, and a single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double, single. And we're going to repeat this all the way across again to get to the other side, and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of row four and we have that beginning that chain three from the previous row. We're going to go right into the top of that chain three. So I want to go just stick your hook right in there and do your last stitch which will be a single crochet. So from here on out it's going to be a repeat since this was a repeat of row two, we're going to go row three, row four, row three, row four. For the miss size, you're going to continue your repeat until you have 37 inches. For the plus size, you're going to repeat until you have 40 inches. Do not fasten off when you get to your... Um, appropriate inch size. Come on back and we're going to do one more row and then we'll fasten off. We will fold up our cocoon, sew up our sides, and then we'll be ready to do the ribbing on our cocoon. So I will meet back up with you 
when you have either your 37 inches for the miss size or 40 inches for the plus size. I now have my length all done. I have <clears throat> 40 inches because I'm doing the, the plus size. If you're doing the miss size, you'll have 37 inches. For our last row, we're going to chain one. It doesn't matter if you ended on a row, th a repeat of row three or a repeat of row two. It doesn't matter for the last row. Chain one and turn your work. Now, sorry, this is really big here, so bear with me just one second so I can get this all turned around. We're going to do just a row of half double crochet for this last row since we started our piece with a row of half double crochet. So it's just one half double crochet in each stitch all the way across just to balance out the entire piece. So just continue working one half double crochet into each stitch all the way across and I will meet back up with you at the end of the row. I'm at the end of our last row we can go ahead and fasten off. Now you can leave a nice long tail here for sewing if you'd like or you can just go ahead and fasten it off. It's really up to you. I'm going to leave a nice long tail here for sewing. Now, I'll put this hook aside here for a second. Let me just slide back my laptop here and pull this back. Now, I'm going to try to put this up here. Now, obviously, I'm going to have way more of a piece here than I can actually fit in the camera, but I have a diagram to show you all. How you can fold up your shrug. This is the outside piece right here is how you lay it out. You can fold it up like this and then along this red line will be how you would sew or how you would, you could either sew it or you could slip stitch it together. But basically you would lay your shrug out on a flat surface right side up and you would sew along the seams when you fold the corners down in like this. And then you would sew it together right along here. Another way to do this is that you would fold your shrug in half like a piece like you would lengthwise. I don't have a nice little graphic for that. I just drew a picture for this one. So you would fold it. This is your fold line. You would take your dots where your dots are here and you fold your shrug in half. And your fold would be, your opening would be down at the bottom and you're going to sew up towards the fold on either side. For the miss size, you're going to fold you're going to sew about 12 inches up leaving a hole up on the top by the fold for your armholes. For the plus size, you're going to sew about 14 inches up, again, leaving this hole at the top. Now, if you find that that armhole is not big enough for you or it's too big, you can adjust how far up or how small up or how less up you, you, grow, you sew that seam up to make that armhole. So that's how you're going to sew your shrug and then how it lays out is just like it is in this picture right here. So these are your armholes coming out. So once we get this all sewn up, then we're gonna work on our edge right here and we're also gonna go around the armholes as well.
as we saw in the slides before, how to fold the cardigan up and how to sew it together, this could either be the top of your cardigan or it could be the bottom of the cardigan. With a cocoon, it really doesn't matter. What we're gonna start working on now is this edging right here. So let's grab our hook and your yarn and let's get started. I like to try to work my first stitch into like kind of into this corner here because the goal is to try to hide your seam as best as you can because we don't want it on the front side of the cardigan so we're going to try to hide it in the corner here. So just pick a stitch close to the corner as possible. I mean that might change when you put it on it might not exactly be in the corner but we're going to try to keep get it as close to the corner as possible. So chain one and we're going to put a half double crochet right back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into and we're going to put one half double crochet into each stitch around. So just keep working one half double crochet into each stitch till you come all the way back around and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. Alright, I made it all the way back around. We're going to go ahead and slip stitch to that first half double crochet that we made and that ends round one. We have 218 stitches for the miss size 230 stitches for the plus size. Rounds two and three are exactly the same. We're going to chain one, half double crochet back into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into, and half double crochet into each stitch around. So continue working half double crochet, one in each stitch, all the way around for rounds two and three. And I'll meet back up with you at the end of round three. I've made it all the way back around. I'm going to slip stitch to that first half double crochet that we made. And we're going to go ahead and fasten off. We need to weave in our ends. And next we're going to work on the armhole. Now I've done one armhole already. And let me just back out the camera a little bit here so I can show it to you. So here is the armhole that I completed. So here's our front seam and here is, I went around the armhole with three rows of half double crochet. So this is how we're going to work the armhole. So let me turn this around and get the other side so I can show you how I did this. Our sleeve hole, um, just like we did with the the neckline or the collar around the out the front outside edge you can start in the corner over here you can start in the center it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with both sleeves I had started in the center so I'm going to go ahead and start here in the center so let me just bring the camera down so we're just going to attach our yarn with a slip stitch chain one and half double crochet right back into that same place that we just slip stitched into. We're going to be working in the ends of the rows. So just 
basically stick your hook in and start working half double crochets all the way around. Now I don't have a set number of half double crochets for this. Just keep working your half double crochets all the way around. Whatever number you get on your first sleeve hole or armhole, that's the same number you want on your second one. So make sure you have the same number on both armholes. So just continue working half double crochet all the way around to get back to the beginning and we're going to slip stitch to join. I'll meet back up with you at the end of this round. I've made it all the way back around. We're going to slip stitch to join. To start round two we're going to chain one we're going to half double crochet right back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into and one half double crochet into each stitch all the way around again. We're going to repeat this for round two and round three. I will meet back up with you at the end of round three. I'm at the end of round three we're just going to go ahead and slip stitch this. Now I got 44 stitches. That's what I got. I made sure I had 44 on both sides. You might have less. You might have more. That's okay. As long as both sides match, that's the important part. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten this off and weave in our ends. And since it's going to be kind of hard to get a full picture of the cardigan in, in the camera, what I'll do is I will back up the camera as best I can to get as much of the cardigan in the camera picture. But I will put up a picture for you like I did a slide of the cardigan for you to get a good picture of it. Then I'll come back. Here's our finished cardigan, just like in the slide before. I couldn't fit the whole thing in the camera. Obviously, can't get my camera up that high. So if you've liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring that bell so you won't miss any of my tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.